y'all. Here we are, Curly Willow Walks. And today we're going to, once again, as always, be hanging out on the East Branch of the Westfield River um, in the Woodland area, Vernal Pools, right along the river. So many different places to explore here. Today I'm going to be keeping an eye on lichens and mosses because they are really standing out right now before the foliage comes out. Um, it's been raining the past few days, so they look quite beautiful and I've seen some very interesting ones. So we're going to head downstream to see what we can find out. So let's go. So one of the first places I wanted to start was this old bench of mine, which I've had for ever, um, 30 years. And it was demoted from the house to the outdoors about, oh, about 15 years ago. And you can see how the lichen is growing on here. Watch out, Gray. See how the lichen's growing on this guy? Watch out, baby. Hoot, hoot, hoot. Sorry, I can't, I won't. I feel bad pushing her off. Okay. <laughs> she wants to show us the lichen too, don't you? Um, but it's really, it's really cool. I mean, it's cool and it's not cool. It's cool how the lichen has grown on this bench. It's not cool because it's ruined my bench because as you can see down here, it's broken. People sat on it and it broke. So that was a bummer. But you can see one of the properties of lichens is its ability to break down material, whether it's wood or rocks. And that's one of the benefits it has in nature, as well as all kinds of other benefits as well. But let's go behind me over in that direction and we're gonna see what kind of rocks we can see down there with lichen and moss and who knows what we'll find. Let's go. Come on, Gray. Sorry, black cat. I scared her. I was trying to be silly. Okay, this is where we're looking. Not there, but. Uh, ow. The edge of my cats. So the path we're taking, this is an old, it was an old dirt road. I don't know why they had it here, but I mean, there used to, used to not be a bridge there. Now there's a bridge. That's the fourth incarnation of that bridge. And it goes over Stevenson's Brook, which meets the Westfield River down here. And this is an old um, dirt path road. I really wish I knew the history of this. There used to be an old schoolhouse that was um, up where the roundhouse is now. And um, so this might have been the road by the old schoolhouse that came down this way. I'm making stories up. My cats are being silly. But something went on down here. So this is an old dirt road that um, is the perfect path right down to where the river and Stevenson's Brook meet. However, we're gonna loop around and try to get over there you see over there where the rocks are all right let's see i gotta get through this bamboo oh my goodness remember in the last vlog when i was talking about bittersweet look at this guy i realize that when i turn the camera around you can't hear me so i'm being weird and being in the scene but holy cow look at this can you see this? Ah! Bittersweet going all the way up. Wow. Okay, so a friend of mine sent me a really interesting question. He asked, are all vines bad? Like I was, I, I know that I want to get rid of the invasive species that's bittersweet, whichever one that is, and I'm assuming that's this. And he asked, um, is, is it, he just removes all the vines from all of his trees on his property. And um, what are the benefits of leaving some vines up on some trees? I mean, if you think about it, trees and vines have an interesting relationship. You know, the tree, um, what is she doing? Is my cat about to poop on screen? That is so funny. My cat, all right, I'm gonna give her her privacy. That is hysterical. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> oh, she is. She's pooping. The cat was totally pooping. <laughs> Anyhow, 
he was asking me, sh should all, all vines be removed from the trees? And what's interesting is you think about the relationship between a, tr a vine and a tree. Like, like the, the vine can't exist without the tree. I mean, that's the whole purpose is the plant has evolved to, oh, I'm, I'm trapped in a vine right now. Oh, there we go. Um, evolved to climb up a tree. And so what is the, so other benefits had to come out of that. What, what benefits would they have been? Obviously, they grow up the tree, they produce fruit, and then there's food for birds. Um, but at what point when you are the steward of a land, taking care of a land, do you make the choice to remove a particular vine that might be taking over a tree? I'm going to ask my friend, um, Heather Cupo, who owns, um, Plant Euphoria. They're entertaining us in the background. They're being so funny. Um, She's gonna come over someday. She helped install, um, if not did install, the pollinator garden that's up here. But she's gonna be a great person to ask about uh, the relationship between vines and trees and what to remove and what not to remove. She'll have a, a very interesting perspective. Um, one that actually honors um, sustainability and native um, plant practices, et cetera, et cetera. So that'll be cool. And oh my goodness, here we are. I've walked through so many vines. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, we're at the edge of the stream. And, um, oh, I almost fell. Okay, so this is a really cool place. This is a place that my daughter called Niagara Falls Junior when she was growing up. Because um, it was huge to her, it is huge. That is the best place in the summer to go swimming. So this goes right through my property. Um, my neighbor, that's their property over there. And it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful special spot. Here come the cats. They're hanging out with us. For those who love cats, that was for you. Um, it's a great place. All right, I'm gonna now look for, oh, look at these. Oh my gosh, there's some sort of mushroom. Okay, not mushroom. I guess they're mushrooms, self mushrooms. Okay, I'm gonna flip this around and not talk much because you won't be able to hear me. Those are super pretty. I don't know what they're called, but I can get a mushroom book and I can look it up and find out what that is. Or there are um, mycologists that not too far down river, oftentimes I see, and um, I can ask them if they can help identify certain mushrooms. They're great. Um, community based educational resources, our um, neighbors who are experts in different things. So I have an expert who's very interested in mushrooms, so do, I can ask them. There are organizations um, that you can participate in around here. Um, like some sort of mycology society. I forget the name, but I know there is one. Um, and anyways, books from the library, etc., etc. But okay, so that's not quite a lichen nor a moss. But that was super cool. All right, let's see what else we can find. So that was a bunch of um, moss, some lichen that I just passed by. I really want to take you guys further downstream where there's these amazing rock structures. Um, but I gotta be honest, I went on a really long hike today. Um, and I'm so tired. That's okay. I will take you on that venture later because there's so many different beautiful mosses and lichens. There's a old quarry. Um, 
less than a mile downstream. And so we will go on that adventure someday, but check this out. Something's, something's eating that tree. It's gotta be a woodpecker. That's what it's gotta be. Here, check it out. There, that's what it's coming down from. What do you guys see? Do you see something? Okay, so I'm back down at the east branch of the Westwood River, and I was really hoping to um, see more moss and lichens here, but honestly, we need to go probably less than a mile downstream. There's an old quarry down there, and after it rains, the moss and the lichen down there is just phenomenal. So we'll just do that another day. But one of the things I think I'd like to mention, since they have become the star of this video, is my two adopted cats. reason why I want them to be the star of this video is because right now the animal shelters um, are in, uh, some of them are in need of foster homes for um, different animals. Um, cats, dogs, guinea pigs, reptiles, I'm not exactly sure, but cats and dogs for sure. Um, so right now they're looking for fosters, for people to foster them. And you know what, fostering um, a pet right now is a great um, learning opportunity. This is a great way to um, bring an animal into your home temporarily. And the care of an animal with children is a great way to teach different types of um, emotional intelligence, uh, as well as how to properly care for an animal. You could do a, a deep dive and go into veterinary sciences. You could go into humanities, how dogs and cats have been part of our cultures. You can look at representations in art with, I mean, you just go crazy. So um, a community-based educational resource, our animal shelters, um, have a need which gives um, families a opportunity to um, integrate learning through service-based learning by adopting these critters. And then you can, that can be your lens towards learning. You can use your, whoever it is that you adopt as your lens to learn about so many different subjects and so many different interests, as well as values. So that's my plug animal shelters. Who knew when we started this? I thought I was going to talk about moss and lichen, but we're talking about animal shelters. Um, here in western Massachusetts, Massachusetts is um, the Dakin, um, there's the Berkshire Animal Shelter, there's a lot. Um, just Google it, that's all you gotta do. Um, and uh, if you contact one and they don't necessarily need support, I'm sure they'll know one that does. And not only do some of these places need help with fostering, they also are welcoming donations of food. And if you have a pet and you need food for your pet, because it's not cheap, um, some of these places also have um, animal food pantries. And if they don't have one on their premise, they can point you to a place to go. So that's the big plug. Support our fur babies. I love them so much. And um, if you have a comment you want to leave or suggestion or something you want to talk about in the future, leave your comments. I would love it if you guys do that. And I'm going to sign off with a quick shot of my girls.